I have made a few presentations, not, not at the LibreOffice conference, but, but for, for customers, about how to make templates. And this presentation is not about how to make templates, but how to deploy templates. And how to avoid, I found some pitfalls in the use of templates, and I want to do it because I've learned the lesson the hard way by making mistakes. <laughs> and I don't want you to do the same mistakes. Uh, a short bio. bio. Um, I've been part of the project for more than 10 years. I've been the lead of the Danish uh, localization team for almost 10 years. I'm working as a product manager at a company called Medinta. We provide customers with various solutions. Uh, LibreOffice is one of them. Uh, some of the things that I do is I uh, teach customers how to use and how not to use drones. And I'm developing templates. So, so a while ago, a guy in, in Australia read, read my blog and asked if I could make him some templates. So we are exporting now in the company to Australia. Uh, for some reason, he thought that I would be the best guy to do that. Uh, I'm still waiting to get an invitation for a customer meeting there. Don't worry. Uh, LibreOffice has a great uh, system to, 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 to maintain and, and great maintain templates. Uh, the problem is that very few people actually work with templates in large deployments. So very few <coughs> has had real experience with deploying and using templates in large environments. It can be rather tricky. There are some pitfalls. <coughs> Templates are, are the base for the users to make uh, to make good documents. And actually, if you are in a situation where the users are supposed to create documents that are compatible with Microsoft Office, you can actually help the users by making solid templates. So solid templates make solid documents. You can make the templates in such a way that it is impossible to, to interchange with Microsoft Office. So it's, if that's the goal, you can do that. But normally it's the other way around. Make the templates solid and you will make sure that they are uh, interoperable with, with Microsoft. But this lecture is about how to avoid the pitfalls in the, in the deployment phase. I've written about developing the templates on our blog. You're welcome to, to visit the blog. And I think now that I get a little time, I made a blog post about these templates where I go into details and show sometimes it's a good idea actually to investigate when you do something in a document, how does the XML look? So we open the XML part of the, uh, the content file in the, uh, in the, in the, in the documents. You know? Why does it behave like this? Okay, maybe you can find some clues in the XML. Uh, I don't have time for that today. Uh, the agenda is how to uh, how to deploy templates, how to name templates, something about inheritance of styles from template to template and from template to documents. And then I have you, yeah, you, yeah. Then you, have, then another uh, some other advices. How to, yeah, about deploying templates. I mean, my own, the company I'm working with, we're 19 people, and even that can be a problem to deploy uh, templates in a way that the users understand. Uh, in some cases, I've been deploying templates for, for several thousand users. And if you are deploying templates, operating templates that are to be used by several thousand people, really have to think about how you deploy them in, in a way that you can maintain them also and where the users can, can find the templates. There are several ways technically you can deploy the templates. You can ask, give, give it to the user and ask him to install it. Uh, that may not be a good idea. I'll get back to each of them. Uh, you can install the, the templates in the user Template directory, 
install the tempest in the program directory, you can deploy the tempest as an extension, which is actually not a bad idea. Uh, you can register a, a new folder, or several new folders, uh, as local template folder, and you can register a file share as uh, a joint or a common uh, template folder. These methods has its pros and cons. Uh, it's important that you choose the right solution, but there's not one solution that fits all. I mean, it has to be something, a decision based on an individual uh, analysis. We can ask the user to import the purpose itself. But, I mean, this may not work. Each individual user has to be involved. Mm, I don't think it's a good idea. But it is possible. Uh, you can deploy a template simply by copying the OTT files, the whatever file it is, uh, into the user's um, personal directory. This is in the same place that imported templates are put. This requires that the system administrator have access to actually putting the files into that template. Install the templates. Yeah, we can put them right into the program directory, which is not a good idea. Uh, but it is, it is a good problem, just to put them in the program directory. We'll get back to this, uh, uh, the program directory uh, later, because we might not want to put something there, but we might want to remove something from there. Uh, this is not the recommended way to deploy uh, templates, but it is actually possible. Um, it is, in some cases, the best idea is, is to make a package. <coughs> Especially if you have users on various locations and, that, and, and you don't have a share, a share a server, then it could be a good idea to wrap things up in, 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 in an extension. It's rather easy to, to make an extension. And with the extension, you have the capability of actually maintaining make sure that, um, that the users get the new version. Um, you can actually, uh, like you, you, LibreOffice can, can check for updates to the program, LibreOffice actually checks for updates, new versions of an extension. So you can define in the extension uh, where the extension should look for updates. So you can actually pull, push new versions to an extension via extension system. So that is a kind of a, a, a way to, to, to wrap the templates up in, in, in a box that can be deployed. Uh, it is somewhat time consuming to, to make this package. So uh, in some situations if you expect to have multiple changes, daily maintenance uh, and you want to make sure that each individual user has precise in that template at some time, then it, it is too time consuming to make these templates, especially if the users are not having the same set of templates. I mean, the financial department has one set of templates and the sales department has another set of templates, then this might be too uh, time consuming. <coughs> Uh, I think the most common used way of doing this is to, to, to dump the files into the personal folder uh, in LibreOffice, so the, the folder. You can register uh, a new folder. Uh, yeah, you, you, you can identify any uh, path on computer to be a folder for templates. And you can register that manually, just in the screenshot. Uh, you can do it this redirection of where the office should look for templates can be done through an extension. Uh, you can do it through Windows registry if, Windows, if the user is uses, using Windows as well. Uh, but be aware not to put too many tasks in this case, I have four. That is actually the 
depending on, on uh, network latency and so on and so forth. But too many paths identified as, as template paths makes LibreOffice very slow. And if you have too many, LibreOffice will not show you any of them because there's a timeout uh, before it, it finishes generating uh, the overview. To identify shared server as the um, template path is, I believe, the most generic way to do it. Uh, it's very easy to maintain the content, and you can actually make access control to the, to the, the various folders uh, on the file share. So this is a, a very fast way to do it. It's a very easy way to maintain it afterwards. But of course, you have to consider uh, network latency and uh, some other pitfalls in this network. You have the benefit that you can very easily make a new version of a certain template. Just remove the old version from the file server and put a new one. And it's available for all users. You can deploy new templates just by putting the file on the file share and everybody uh, on the network have access to it and it is adopted from the office automatically. <clears throat> it's also a good idea if you want to deploy different templates for different servers. <coughs> ah, sorry, different templates for different people. It could be uh, department wise or role wise. Simply by, by uh, creating folders on your file share. Let's say for with the department names, saying the financial department have access to this folder. In the other folder, the sales department have access, network access to this folder. Then the office will automatically only show the templates that each individual have access to. So you have a generic motor or engine to deploy um, templates for various uh, people. But there are some downsides. Uh, I'll get back to the first point that can occur conflicts if you have a very complicated setup of who is have access to what. That can occur uh, naming conflicts. And I'll get back to, to that. Uh, there's another thing that I've discovered that is that if one person has access to different folders through different complicated access control setups, many groups, uh, a person who's a member of, of different groups, it takes a lot of time to calculate precisely which templates does this individual user have access to. The user of time times out and doesn't show anything. So the, this is one of the risks uh, by making a very complicated setup of, of members of the group have access to, to folders with templates. If it becomes too complicated, it doesn't work. Uh, so that's something you have to take into consideration before you use this method. In that case, I would suggest either an extension or some, or some kind of synchronization to the, uh, the local path. Of course, we also have a uh, thing called network latency. Networks are getting faster and faster, but network, network, network latency is still a problem if you, uh, if you don't have a very fast network. Also, calculating the access, which folders, which templates have this specific user access to, there's a light latency on, on that calculation. So that can be one of the big balls. Test it. From various um, from from different locations in, in the network and see how it works. But if you make a hundred folders and connect to a hundred groups, and some people have access to more than one or two or three groups folders, then you might discover that the latency will actually maybe start working. I had a situation where the IT department couldn't use any templates because they have access to everything. The system. The system administrator have access to everything. So LibreOffice never got finished calculating 
before LibreOffice gave up and said, sorry, I can't show you any templates because it takes too long time.
So the root is, is, is actually a subfolder called mm. my timbers. If you make a subfolder, the user will see a kind of cap, uh, category by that name. So I would always prefer to put things into a kind of folder structure. Uh, Danish templates, English templates, uh, letter templates, uh, report templates, whatever, uh, to, to have the user find the correct templates. So yes, it is, but only in one level. Dimitri? Is it possible to adjust uh, the timer mm -hmm. value? Um, you said that uh, the people are time Most likely, I don't know. But that would just make the waiting time for the user. Mm -hmm. And if you meet the, 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 the timer, then there's a symptom that something is not perfect. I'm sure you can, but I'm not try. I don't know where. But most things are configurable in the office. Uh, what's the... Yeah. Yes, it's just a remark. So you mentioned all those different deployment methods. Yeah. I think that you can also categorize them according whether they deploy on a user-specific level or on a system-specific level or on an organization-wide level. It's a shared repository. Uh, yeah. 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 And, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And, uh, and it also depends what you want to debate on. If you put mm -hmm. them into user space, you give also the user a certain control about those templates, and mm -hmm. it depends on whether yeah. you really want this, yeah. because I think you want to update your templates and so on yeah. and so on. Yeah. Some, of the, some of the methods gives the user the opportunity to make changes or remove them or add some. <coughs> if you use other methods, you prevent that user and, and it also prevents you as an administrator to effectively, effectively revoke any of the templates because they are out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think besides having things into categories, it's actually possible. I never tried. I think it's possible to make an extra level based on language. It just comes to my mind now that I've seen this, but I've never tried. So that you. Besides having the, the, uh, the categorization, you also have a filter that is the language, which means English users only see the English versions, and the Danish users only see the Danish versions. I haven't tried it. I'm, uh, it's not a promise, but I think I can record something about that. Catherine, did you have a... Yeah. It's my friends that are asking questions. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that there's, uh, if there's too many Templates in the template folder, the deep office will not be able to, uh, to load them because of the timeouts. Mm -hmm. Is there a good reason for that? Because I was saying reading the, reading the templates in a folder and displaying them for the, for the use of the choose one would be a very simple task. So it sounds like a, a bug. It sounds like, it sounds like a, a bug, or is there a good reason for I, I don't. My experience is that it's not the amount of templates because if it's it's there's a large amount of templates in a simple structure is not a problem. The problem is that if you have uh, multiple folders with different access and you have a lot of them, then for certain users, maybe it's, uh, I think it's calculating which templates, which templates is this user actually uh, Having access to, but but this calculation is actually on the system level, so it's it's not really on the office level. I, I'm I'm sure the, the the calculation is on the network on on, on the yeah. system level. Yes, but it's LibreOffice that that times out. So, so I'm not right, we did the process the uh, preview generation maybe. Mm. Uh, does, yeah. that, does that occur on all platforms on all operating operating systems? I've seen on Windows. Most of my our customers are using Windows as the end user and a Windows Fire server, Windows Shares server in the backend. And Active Directory as the engine to calculate. But I haven't uh, experimented uh, a lot with about this. Yeah. Just want to take a check of time. I have five minutes for the rest. <laughs> so, uh, any more questions? No, you. Naming each table has a name. Nice. <laughs>
the name is what the user see here. I get to report methods for the company. And when you create a document, that template is stored as a metadata in the document. Uh, yeah. If you have two templates with the same name in the same category, one of them is not visible. And it's kind of random which one of it is. <laughs> this is really, I mean, I have done a it took me some time to find out why some of my templates were never deployed. Or why I deployed one template and there was another template that disappeared. That was because they have overlapping names. Because this view of the, that we show to the user, uh, the, 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 the name of the template has to be unique. We said uh, duplicate names, okay, one of them, I mean, they're kind of stacked. And I don't know which one is at the top. It's, it's not file name, but it's in file properties. Yeah, the name is in the, the file properties of the template. Yeah. That's why you give it a name. That's why you control the name. Sorry, I should have mentioned it. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah and so, so if, if you... If, if you are in a situation where a template disappears, this is the reason, and you have no way to find out where the template is. <laughs> cool. I, I, I've seen this happen because people used the template uh, and changed it and saved it in a different file name without changing the fields in yeah. the file properties. Yeah. That, that's how it happens. If you create different. a new template from template, yeah. the new template gets the same name as the template that you used. So the default is failure. That's kind of crazy. But when you create a new template from another template, the first thing you do is change the name. Uh, yeah. And, and and another thing is we never know which one of them is this. Kind of fun. Maybe. And then, it's, it's, no, I think I mean, the first point should be considered a bug. The fact that new that the default is a failure. I mean, it should be underscore one or something, just rename it for crying out loud to avoid this problem. Uh, but the default is a failure. That's, that's the bug. Right? Yeah. I think actually that there's no reason not to display both of them. Because it's not used as a key. So you could just... In this case, it is used as a key. Obviously. Yeah, but that there's... There's no UI reason for it. In the program, it's being used Agreed. To Agreed. I'm just, just yeah, right, it's I'm uh, not deciding how it should work. I'm telling yeah. you how it does work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I've been there. Yeah. Look at finding where did my template go? <laughs> I couldn't find it. And especially if you have the same folder. You, I mean, you can have you can use multiple uh, deployment methods in a combination, and you can use the same structure from different sources. Mm -hmm. And we do that in our own company. And then. Where's the name, uh, the naming uh, uh, conflict coming from? They can actually come from two different sources. So you, if you deploy something here, something here is this. Okay. Anything else about? Uh, I agree. There's no reason to use a name as a key. <coughs> Maybe there is somewhere on the program. Maybe there's a historic reason. Uh, on the historic files, most likely. Yeah, most most likely. So Somebody. I made this the key, and then in a minute you'll find that when it comes to inheriting, we use another key. <laughs> okay, how many of you are aware that you can actually inherit stars from template to document, from template to template? Quite fantastic feature, yeah, of course you know. Uh, when you create a document based on a template, if the template is later changed with either changing the uh, styles or removing styles or adding new styles in the template, that change can be inherited to
to each document. That's quite a nice feature, if you want it. But my own experience is, my own opinion is, this is too complicated for the user. Yeah, document can inherit styles, templates can inherit from templates. If you make a new template from another, from another template, that's, then you also have this inheritance. Uh, yeah, when you load it, the, 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 the target at a later time will be asked, do we want to update? Now, that's, that's a question, you have two buttons to choose between. Don't ask your users to select between two buttons. It's too complicated. There's 50% chance that they will say the wrong button. Uh, I mean, they will pick a random one because it's actually a pretty hard question to answer. Because, uh, also, that's a US problem in that dialogue. The, the question is not perfectly clear. So, there's a good chance that they will choose the wrong button because, they, first of all, they don't know about inheritance. Secondly, the question they are asked is a complicated question. So they just select one of the buttons. Ish. Uh, yep. uh, it can be useful, I don't like it, uh, for the end user, but it's very, I use it very much for, in my development phase, when I develop templates, I inherit from template to template. Uh, and I always, if I am making more than one template for, for one customer, I always start making a master template. A template that only consists of styles. That's my styles bank. And then I use inheritance, and then I make the desktop templates, then I make the report template, blah, blah, blah. everything inherits from the styles bank. That's my master template. Whenever I have a design change, I do that in the master and inherit. Then I know that all my templates have the same look and feel. Inheritance here is very, very nice. You can do it automatically with inheritance, or you can choose to do it manually by load styles. But whether you do it one way or the other, but I actually think that inheritance here is very, very good. Um, how do we identify which template to inherit from? First, I thought it was the name, because, I mean, the name is the key in the, uh, the other situation. No. I think, I'm not sure, I think, and I'm pretty sure that it's true that the name does not, uh, has any involvement here, but I'm not really sure. But I know that the path and file name is a key in this situation, which is very obvious, but it's not very smart. Because that means that I cannot move around my template's repository. If I move my template repository, I will, I will cut all inheritance. Call has a comment. Chris, uh, you can set in the files, say, if the URLs are relative or absent. Uh, have tried if that influences the situation. When you, when, when you, you say the template or the document? Two options. You can say, no, it is. Options. options. Uh, load same, I think, that you can set if uh, URLs are relative or absent. And maybe that's the influence. You never know. It could be. <laughs> I was. Mm, <laughs> I, that, it didn't come to my mind. I just discovered yeah, yeah. that the f the path and file name definitely is a key because if you move your template repository or inheritance bench, so it's all it's exactly the absolute path, uh, actually not the relative path according to some. Pen well, pen. it could be that the system I was working with at the time was set up with with absolute path. It could be, and I'll go investigate. Next week, not today. But it could be. Uh, no, it's general. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but it, 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 it's not logical that you have names as key one place and file path the other place. 
Uh, and it actually took me some time to find out why doesn't this work and why does it work sometimes, a lot of times. And then I tried to make, I mean, structured tests uh, and found out that the, f the, the path and farming is a key in this situation. But there could be random things like set special settings about how to find paths. Uh, but this is very important because you cannot change either the path of the filing of the template, of the, which makes it rather almost random whether it works or not. I prefer not to inherit from template to document and mention that. I find it too confusing for the users. Uh, I mostly use Osmani inheritance. Uh, but you can also use the manually. Now I want to take the stars from this and load it to that. Those two are more or less the same. One is automatic, the other is manual. But only from template to template. So, are there any questions about that? I have to speed up a little bit. Otherwise, we will have no lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Which is important. Yeah. A few other. Advices? Oh, actually, only one, I believe. Yes, so it's, it's, we, have, we have one hour at the moment, according to the plan. Yeah, that's including the lunch, I believe. We were asked to have the lunch in the rooms. Yeah, okay, we just fix it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, lunch break is at 1 o'clock and it continues at 2 o'clock. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll pay time. Yes. One, I'll make some more slides. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> LibreOffice comes with some pre-installed templates. In Denmark, we don't speak English. Some of the templates are resumes with English text and even names. Remove them. That's getting back to the, uh, we have to remove files from the programs directory, which is quite weird. But when you deploy professionally, you should remove most, at least the, 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 the writer templates and the spreadsheet templates. There are some impress templates that are okay, unless you want to have a very strict uh, uh, look and feel in the company, then you should remove, the, remove them too. Uh, because in a professional environment, they, they have no right to exist. I mean. <laughs> Some of them are, it's true, it's a, it's a CV in English with names in it. Uh, yeah. I think there was a competition about a year ago uh, asking designers to, to, to put some content in LibreOffice. And, and uh, yeah, it sounds like a good idea, and it's a good idea for, for private people to have some examples. But in a professional deployment, the system administrators should remove them from the program directly, if you ask me. Uh, only the impress, impress uh, that, that consists uh, layouts have a life in a professional environment. But they can be good ideas and examples for the designer of other templates. Okay. That was pretty much it. I have my ink block and I expect to... Oh, this, this is not my email address. This is an error. Absolutely. I'll correct that in the other version. Anyway, I, I expect to make a blog post about this topic like next week or something. I've got most of it. There are examples about where to find work in the XML or some more things that I didn't thought. I thought I had only half an hour. No, no, we don't have early for lunch. Um, uh, follow my blog. Danish people can follow the Danish newsletter blog where I blog a lot more. Uh, if you have any questions afterwards, feel free to, to send me questions or ideas, or whatever. Uh, don't use this email address, it's not mine. <laughs> That's embarrassing. As an L, more after my, or before the, the ads. But I'll 
may each of us and uh, give a new version to Sophie to our program website. Uh, I guess got so many mail from me this week, so you got my mail anyway. Uh, feel free to, to ask me questions. I'm really interested in, in, in getting more knowledge and share experience. And because I think the, the whole templates, the, the concept of templates, it's very, very good, and not many people are actually using it. Not even, not even in, in professional uh, deployments. Uh, I've, I don't know anybody except for Core, perhaps, that actually have experience with templates. And you know, the, the less done is the expert, and that's me. Uh, I haven't heard of anybody else who's actually talking about using templates and, and, and so on and so forth. So, so I'm obviously the, the expert because I talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I found some bugs uh, about it because I found some, some bugs in the office. Uh, I think the, the one about, the, no, the one that a, a, a new template from a template inherits the name and thereby causes a failure was rejected. That's not a bug, that's a feature. Okay, what can I do? Uh, but if anybody, if you can program it, then change it. Just make a small change, as we do with file names, underscore one, underscore two, underscore three, or remove one. That's the name as a key, and use something else as a key. To, uh, I'll be perfect, but uh, I posted, submitted quite some bugs for our templates over time, and I um, may, yeah, I will to the post more about repos. Yeah. Have you tried whether there is any developer which really still understands why it is implemented that way? It seems to be implemented. Uh, I've never met a developer who had interest in templates. Okay, so, so, so let's assume that there is nobody here left who really understands. Uh, uh, I don't think that anybody in the community actually knows how this works. So, yeah, you're the expert. Yeah. You said it already, yeah. So, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the list down on the expert, <laughs> but I'm not a programmer. Uh, absolutely no program. But, but and, and, and the first step could actually be let a developer investigate how does it actually work and compare that to how was it supposed to work. Maybe nobody knows, nobody remembers how it was supposed to work, but, but if somebody the first step would be how does it work? Because I only made some tests and I call them, give me an idea, I'll go back and make some more tests trying to, to change on settings, but I have, maybe we can... Uh, uh, it, it's, uh, some five or seven years ago, there had been implemented a change uh, that in the root template folder there was a name XML, from what I remember, and that was used to make a combination of different folders and whatever. So there, there have, have been intentional changes at that time to make combinations but later I've seen that that isn't really used. So there, there has been changes around this, uh, this functionality. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me it's also a bit, uh, uh, well, hard to understand why and yeah. how it changed. But maybe we could even, well, if you think you could track something in the old open office of work, the archives and whatever. But yeah. I, I agree it's, uh, it, it's hard to understand. Uh, yeah, it's a because it's, it's, it's a great system. The attention is behind it is great. And if you figure out how it works, it works fine. Yeah. Uh, but there are some pitfalls. Yeah. Uh, my first conclusion is, no, my first point is, I've given you my, some of my experiences, so you can avoid the same yeah. pitfalls that I've been to. Uh, and the other one is raise the, the case. Should we do something about it and make it better and fix these small bugs and make, maybe ask uh, a programmer to look at it? So, so, for your statement that it's difficult to understand, does it refer to the functionality or does it refer to the code? Uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely. Uh, no, it, I didn't look at the code, no, okay. but not mostly, mostly indeed why why this came with the name XML and later it seemed to be uh, uh, removed again. How it works. Okay, so. 
I don't think that anybody has been looking at this topic for years. Because this, this climate <laughs> confusion is, uh, I wouldn't call it a disaster, but it's very yeah, yeah. It's, 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 no, no, no. It's, it's unfortunate, but of course it's far from a disaster because when it happens, uh, some professional pop up and find out what happened. Yeah, I'll make more money. There are items in that I would love to. And more money on first. Yes, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But in the end of the day, if there's a customer willing to pay for making the different system better, it'll be done. Yeah. I mean, that's the way the world. I haven't met any customers that are willing to pay for fixing this. <laughs> but maybe we can find a student or something yeah. dumb enough to do free work. Maybe in uh, this uh, scalability problem with the number of templates, of course there is the value generation, but maybe there is also an inefficient implementation of some yeah. too late algorithm. Uh, I think yeah. that one should be possible to solve. Yeah. Mm. Because, or at least, it should be not... I mean, the way people are to react is, oh, there's too much work for me to do, I'll show you nothing. Yes, that's not the basic. It should say, okay, First, 30, 30 minutes has passed now. Maybe I should stop and give you what I've found so far and give you a message that I didn't find anything yet. So the usual approach would be first to generate the list and add the previous later on days again, so something like that. I so think it's... Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, if like I can't... Yeah. 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 But I'm sure that, that because I don't think any changes has been made to, to the template system, Systems in the in the green period, as I call it, uh, it must be possible to optimize the code. Yes. I'm pretty sure it's possible to optimize the code, but I'm not one to do it. I'm not a programmer. Okay. So here you're creating documents uh, from from templates, which are local. Um, you also said you could register HTTP folders. Yeah. Another strategy which is used in some corporate environments is that you have a CMS system where you log in and you create, a, you start creating a document there. Yeah. You have a page where you say, this mm. is my name, mm. and you're logged in so the system mm. knows it. Mm. Maybe you are on a page for a specific case mm -hmm. and you say, I want to send a letter related to the mm. case. Mm. So you, then you might have a button saying, okay, create a new letter, Great and then you get an yeah. ODT which you can continue writing yeah. the actual content, and the, the template has been chosen then, and some things have been filled in. Yeah. At what point would you switch to such a system? Uh, first of all, in that case we're not using the LibreOffice template system. Yeah. Because the document is actually not created by LibreOffice, it's com uh, created by the Pentagon system. I would use this in situations where I want to merge data from that system into the letter. It could be I have a, a customer relation management system where I have all my customers. And when I need to send a letter to the customer, I need to put his name in the address field. In that case, I will use that method. Yeah. Then I'm not using LibreOffice to create the document. The CRM system is creating the document, giving the result with data merged data. In that situation, remember to uh, reset the metadata. Because, you know, when, when you create a document from template, uh, you have a creation date, that is today. You have uh, who created the document, you have, uh, yeah, these are basically. And it has been edited only one time. There are three meta fields. But if you don't reset them, because LibreOffice is not involved in creating the document, it will be the template creation base that creates the document. It will be uh, the person who created the template that will be in the metadata for the document, and it will be, have been edited 46 times when you first created the, the document. So remember to, to, to reset the metadata in the document. In the document, you have to create the document. Yeah, the CM system is creating the document and you are merging data into the letter. Let's say so. But LibreOffice is not involved in creating the document. So LibreOffice will not reset the creation date to today. It will just take whatever creation date was in the template, the author, and the number of edits, and maybe two more. But it's just a reminder. 
we forgot that in our own system. <laughs> but it is another kind of, as a, well, technically, from the user's perspective, yes, I'm creating a new document, and LibreOffice is automatically opening, so it's a template. No, it's not a template. It's just taking a copy of one file and making a new file. So, so but yes, uh, from a business perspective, it is the same thing, but technically, you're not using the LibreOffice templates yeah. system to do it. Uh, and it's a very good idea to think that way, because that way you are creating the document in the back end and you can manipulate anything. I mean, you can uh, uh, add data, right? The receiver of the document, case number, the price of the purchase or whatever, uh, and put that directly into the document, even yeah, at, at, at creation time, even before it comes to the user's uh, the, the, uh, desktop computer that would be doing the backend, showing a, a final list. So something uh, came to my mind which could be made a check also. So the backlink from a document to its originating template, it must be somehow encoded into the document uh, necessarily. Yes. And, and I have found the XML yes. that does this. I think it is called template key okay. actually which is path and funding okay I this is a very very I, I remember it cost me yes. I had found that and I'll put that on my blog uh, let's say in a week or so uh, okay the first eight days of receiving so uh, then I'll, I had most of the blog yeah. ready as my preparation for this presentation and I found the, the XML then we'll also be check whether mm -hmm. this is Actually, part of the official specification because maybe then the specification of ODF tells more about it. I don't know. Could be, could be, could be. No, I'm not taking it. I, I just, just looked at uh, the specification. Okay. So, the inheritance of templates is not that's the more specific. Yeah. The name of the template which was used to create a document is, is in meta.xml. Okay. It's a, just the name. The name. Yeah, the name. The name. The name. Uh, oh, okay, let me check. Okay. No mind. I mean, We've started a discussion here. We'll yeah. continue this discussion on mailing lists and, and, and uh, the ways of I hope. <laughs> it's a URL. Okay. Yeah. yeah. URL even. It's a pointer to the file. Yeah. Okay. So Which is. And you, it also has a title. So it has the link and the name. Both. Is it an and? Yeah. Or is it an or? No, and. And. So both the name and the file and path yeah. has to be. That's why. It, Rarely works because if you change one of them, nothing will work. And yes, nice. actually, we are bound to a specific place. Yes. And but of course, if it's in the specification, then I mean, we are kind of locked. Well, um, maybe not all the fields are uh, required. Yes. There's something to think about for somebody. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of. I just found the problem. Yes, <laughs> Don't know how to solve it. So okay. I am also asked myself the question, also Microsoft Office offers this possibility to inherit styles to certain extent, but mm, I'm not sure. Uh, I think they do today, they didn't do in 2003. I don't know, and late I don't know the state of the art, I also don't know how inten intensive this is really used in corporate mm. environments. And I have no clue about that. So the name is optional. Okay. When you in the metadata, the link is required, the name is optional, and you can also put uh, the date. Okay. The, Sorry. The, so you can never get away from a path. The question is whether yeah. the specification really requires your implementation to interpret the path. <laughs> but you, you can leave out the entire element, of course. Yeah, yeah but then you will have no inheritance. Right. I would like to have it kind of generic inheritance so that I have a document and if I move my template, it would still keep track of the template. I don't know if but this field is used for the inheritance in the liberal the, office implementation. The path file is used for inheritance. Oh, but okay. I know that. Okay. But if, I, I don't know if other elements imply an inheritance as well. Because I've, I've made tests. On them, twenty. Try to do this. Try to make a change. Try to do this. Try to make a change. Uh, 
because I wanted to know, I, wa I wanted to find out how does it work. Yeah. Uh, so I made quite a lot of tests, and one thing I know for sure is that the path is a key for inheritance. And I haven't figured out how to avoid it. I'll try the, the, the trick that Cole mentioned to, uh, with a setting pointing to relative paths instead of absolute paths. Uh, but that will be a test next week or something. <laughs> or maybe you do it before me. OK, any further questions? Any comments, ideas? Do you have any related experience? I think it's great fun to make templates. Uh, what I'm often asked about is, what I didn't talk about today, is to make sure that the documents, the final documents, become as interoperable as possible. And I have a blog post describing how to make, how you in the template can make your end, user doc, uh, end user's document actually pretty interoperable. Because if you don't think about this, uh, converting documents between Microsoft Office and LibreOffice at the time you design your templates. It's just, sometimes it's just a matter of should I use this trick or should I use this trick? But one of them is, is works with Microsoft Office, the other one doesn't, so you can choose the one that does, but doesn't, if that's what you want. But, but you can help your users, and you can make better into but interoperability by making good templates. So, so uh, that is something that, that is out of the scope for today, but, uh, but uh, uh, making good and solid templates makes life much easier for end users. I'm mostly 90% of my templates are uh, writer templates. I use to, um, I usually make one or two or three interest templates. I have never, have you ever heard of people using templates for spreadsheets? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, to a certain extent, even myself. But okay. this is very specific because the templates uh, have a connection with macros and the Templates okay, are that, packaged yeah, yeah, alongside yeah. the macros and that they have one yeah, bundle. Then you make sure that, then you actually use the template for a container for the macro. Uh, also that case. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a rather specific case. Yeah. Maybe you would call it a template. Quotes or other stuff? Quotations? Okay. Maybe I just don't work enough. That's what the work of the design team to actually uh, give us some good default uh, service styles might trigger people actually yeah. thinking about uh, yeah. using templates. Yeah. And, uh, some of the dialects could use it rewind. If you have ideas, there of course there was a discussion in the UX although already? Or, uh, yeah. so mm. You know yeah. maybe already? I noticed uh, that they are actually working yeah. on it, and that's why I mentioned it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I thought about the when you want to load styles from another document. I mean, that dialog is, is. I don't think it's broken. I just think the guy who designed it was not very wise. <laughs> is it still there? Um, I thought uh, it was. Well, part of the functionality disappeared with the new template dialog. The dialog is still there in 5.0. I think that fails. And uh, there, is a, there is an issue in Boxilla asking for okay. make. Because it, you, have to do, you have to know how it works. You have to do things. You have to click in the right. Uh, uh, you have to do things in, in, in the right uh, direction. -ish, I would say. You have to do this before this, and not vice versa. Because when you do this, you're done. So if you forgot to do that, then you have done something wrong. Okay, you that I yeah, sorry, I, I'm uh, sorry. When you load, load style from yeah, file. Yeah, when you go, yeah. go to the load, yeah. the point to the file, you have to yeah. make decisions about what to load yeah. before you pick the file. Yeah. Because when you pick the file, choo, then you execute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you pick something wrong, yeah. then you execute something yeah, yeah, yeah. that you shouldn't have executed. Yeah. Uh, right. I think there's a, uh, a bug in Buxilla. Well, thank you.
here for coming and listening.